Hello and welcome, I am Aziel and today it's Saturday which means I have to think of a video because YouTube algorithm and well I thought of a good one, I thought it was a really good one, I can run it as a sort of mini series sort of thing, I can run it for a while and it's not about collecting armies, it's not, and I, you know, it's not about advising people how to collect an army or anything like that or finances or anything like that, it's why I love a particular faction. Now, the good thing about this is that I can run it on many different systems. You know, I can talk about war games, video games, anything, and a particular faction within that game. But, I thought I shall begin at the beginning with the Eldar. The Eldar was the first faction I loved when it came to war gaming. And I'll be honest with you, I pretty much loved these since the first time I heard about them. And that was way back, 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 back in 2nd edition in secondary school now this was when with the person who really got me into a game now I'll be honest with you when I first played 40k it was a while before that and that was in primary school and I played a game of Tyranid Attack that was the first time I played 40k and then I really got into 40k in secondary school so with you know where was an after school club and you know we started playing it now I loved the Eldar, the first time I heard of them, and the first models I heard about, and he, my friend was talking about, was the Dark Reapers, and it explained how they had missile launchers and heavy armour, and you know, they were the sort of dark, gothy, yeah, I was into metal back then too, um, our, our side of the Eldar. And then when we got to play and I saw his models, I thought they looked fantastic. I mean, the paint jobs weren't always great, but they looked the models themselves look fantastic. I love the look of the Eldar, and I still do today. They're one of the best looking armies Games Workshop produces. And this is everything from the old models to the new ones. I tell you what, I, I do not have any shame running the fine cast, drooping hawks, uh, striking scorpions, you know, or any of those, even the fire dragons. I don't mind running those older models. They look fine next to the new ones. They really do. They look great. I, and like I said, I still do run these. I still run the Viper, the original plastic Viper. I have one in my army, and I still run it to this day. So yeah, it was always the look of these armies, which is what I loved. I love the Eldar because it was, the look was fantastic. I love it. Now, I, when it comes to the lore, I quite like that too. Now, But I'll be honest with you, I've read the Path of the Eldar omnibus, and I've read the CS Go To Eldar Prophecy books. They're not good. They are not good books, okay? This is not me being all snotty. I'm not a fan of Gav Thorpe as a writer, to be honest with you. And CS Go To, got to, uh, doesn't do good books. I mean, look at his Dawn of War series for a start. But yeah, they're not well written. But let's talk about the law. Now, the law of the Eldar is long and completely mystifying. First things first, if you get into it, you always. When you talk about Eldar law, everyone goes, oh, they did this, they created Slanesh, and they, brought, they caused the Eye of Terror. Now here's the thing, the Dark Eldar did that, the Craft World Eldar didn't. And that's the army I'm talking about today. That's the faction I'm talking about, the Craft World Eldar. See, what happened was, the Exodites went, <laughs> you lot are being weird, we're off. The Craft World Eldar were like, the conspiracy theories of the Eldar at the time. And they were like, yeah, you better cut that out or something bad's going to happen. And the Dark Eldar were like, yeah, what's going to happen? We're going to bring a god into existence that's going to eat all our souls and mess up our empire. Uh, you're just conspiracy theorists. And yeah, the Aldari were right. They went right, it was literally up to the last minute. They were like, dude, bad things are gonna. Can you not feel that psychic stuff happening in the warp? That's something bad is happening in the warp. Right. And the Dark Aldari was like, yeah, 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 whatever. And basically, the Craft Order went right up to the last minute, went right, we're off, you have fun, we're away. And they left on their Craft World. Bye, gone. And of course, the Eye of Terror opened up, destroyed the Eldar Empire, at all the Eldar souls, and the Dukai went into the webway to continue what they were doing unabated and with no fear of creating another god. But the Craft World Eldar, they left. And this is when it gets really interesting. This is when their lore really gets to their own thing. See, now we have the Phoenix Lords. The Phoenix Lords were a fantastic addition to the armies, and they are a good part of the army for another reason. They add a versatility which almost no other faction has. Let me explain. The guard has mass inventory or heavy artillery. The space means are jack of all trades, but they are all the same. 
you have the Tyranid mass swarms, and you can have big monsters, but and you okay, and you can have some close combat. But the old and the tower are basically you know mass infantry. The Eldar, you can run an army of whatever you want and play any style you want. You can do melee completely, have a massive melee based army with howling banshees and warp and warp spiders. No, uh, ghost uh, ghost blades. I've just wraith blades. That's the ones. You can run a massive heavy artillery army with dark reapers and falcons and other tanks as well. You can run a fast army with jet bikes, vipers, shining spears, swooping hawks, swoop spiders. Obviously you can do as well. Oh yeah, if you want to do heavy um, weapons, you can also got fire dragons and dark reapers as well. You know, you've got the way you can, you can field the Eldar to your liking specifically. And there is the only faction this is capable of and no other faction can do this. Not even space wings, not even space wings. And better than that, you can field an army which is completely erratic and eclectic and have everything from stealthy to close combat to just heavy weapons and have everything. Well, that's something every space wings can do. But unlike the space wings, like I said, the Eldar can build armies specifically to do one thing. And the other thing about the Eldar army, they can do one thing and they do it very well. Let's take my favourite unit, the Rangers. Now the Rangers now have shared runs to back them up, so you can do a nice fast as well as Stealthy Army. Back when I played them heavily, back in 4th and 5th edition, you could have literally given them an almost, I think it was a 2 plus cover save, which was insane. They had a plus 1 on their cover save, and uh, I think heavy cover gave them 3 plus, which gave them a 2 plus cover save. Now 2 plus cover saves were pretty much invulnerable saves, and of course only things like Flamers could er erase it. But the way it was done, you had levels for the first time, which means you could literally give the rangers uh, up above high enough to avoid the flamer, so that didn't avoid them, that didn't touch them, and everything else ha was suffering to hit them. Two plus saves all the time. They were almost indestructible. Now, what makes them cool is their story as well. Now, see, rangers are my favourite because they're outcasts, but not... But they're called outcasts, but they're not really outcasts in the more conservative term. They choose to leave. They are not, you know, cast out. They're like, especially in Ayla Talk, which is the, my favourite craft world, they tend to decide to leave because they can't deal with the strictures of Ayla Talk. Ayla Talk are very strict craft world. They're one of the strictest with their past. I mean, surprisingly, they don't have as many exiles as they should do because of literally how they, they, they drum it in that each path has to be done. So they leave. Uh, Lot Vader Tog youth leave because they can't cope. They always come back at times of war. They are very loyal, but they are the most outcast. Now, what I think is the best thing about the Eldar is this. They have many different units, and their units are very good at what they do. If you take the Fire Dragons, the Fire Dragons are great, heavy, are heavy weapons uh, removals are uh, very heavy uh, heavy armor you know their amount of guns could would blast apart everything and they were fantastic at they however are not very good at melee not even their exos has a decent melee weapon they are they are there to destroy the heavy infant heavy artillery heavy armor and that's it so one of my favorite things i used to do when i played back in fourth and fifth was a banshee suicide now Banshee Suicide was basically that. Banshees would run up the field with fire dragons right behind them. They would clear a path for the fire dragons to get to where they needed to go. And they would take on everything they needed to get take on until the fire dragons got. And this was back in the day when you had to shoot the closest unit. So the Banshees had to be shot first. Yet yeah, the Banshees were horrible against any ranged weapons, but close combat they were the best. And this was also a time when power weapons ignored armor saves. Like, this is not minus one, two, three, four of AP. This was ignore, absolutely ignored armor saves. Invulnerable saves could still be taken. But yeah, they would ignore. And even like, I've had times where Banshees just tore through everything. Terminators, Space Marines, Necrons, everything. The Banshees just ripped through them. They weren't break a sweat until they got to something heavy. And then they would die, and then they'd go 
a few person would go, oh no, ha ha, you killed your hair and banshees. And then they'd realize in my next shooting turn, because it would be my turn next, right behind them, within half range, was a squad of fire, uh, fire dragons right in front of their heavy artillery. Yeah, nothing would survive that. And they, you just have like, all of a sudden you have these very big mount guns right in harm's way for your heavy artillery. And like I said, this is what makes Eldar good. And this is what makes Eldar players good. Now, I watch the tournaments and people go, Oh my god, Eldar are so tough. No, Eldar aren't tough. Eldar are special. And Eldar players, yeah, we're special too. We know the units are like the back of our hands. Every special rule, every single thing they can do. Which means we also know their weaknesses. We know what to put in front of them and what they can avoid and what they can attack. And they will go that way. We will do that. That's what makes them so great. That we can do this. And it's like, there isn't an army that the Eldar can't go against. Because we, the Eldar are so specialist. That even Horde armies aren't an issue to an Eldar army. I've played Imperial Guard so many times. And one of my best ways of attacking an Imperial Guard army was War Walkers. War Walkers were fantastic. They are still fantastic for this. And... Now, the fact they still got that scalpel, which means they could go up first, and you give them anything with massive amount of bullets against the horde army, you've got right into range, and you're going to shoot in range, and you're going to do damage. You'll be take they're going to be taking handfuls away on the first turn, and that's when they suddenly just see these two war walkers right up close, you know, and then these war walkers charge, so they could now have stop any of those units moving too and that's so then you've got all these elder back and forth. i was even playing guardians when people thought they were a bit daft like oh, why are you taking guardians and not die avengers i would say well they're better I was like well no we're not like yeah i can put this warlock and cast um i'm trying to think what it's called now basically it was an automatic casting back then and it gave them a cover save a five plus cover save and then if it was like covers four plus again Basically, an armor save, an invulnerable armor save, and again, the guardians just were so strong against this because they were specialists, believe it or not, in ranged combat. So you didn't want to move them much, but you wanted them to have a decent armor save. So the warlock gave them that armor save, and it was fantastic. It was great. Um, now let's think, and I think that's about it. Like that's why I love the Eldar Part One. I would say because I could literally do this so much longer. I love the Eldar. I've always loved the Eldar. I think they're great looking. I like the fact they're so versatile. I like their law as well. I like what it's done. I like the past law. I like the new law. Okay, let's say post Eye of Terror and pre Eye of Terror law is fun and enjoyable. And it, they, I just think they're a great army. And I, I was not an addition since second edition. I have not built an army for. I'm just finishing my 10th edition army for them. Um, yeah, so fantastic. I love it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very... I hope you enjoyed my TED Talk on the Eldar and why I love them. Next week will be the Thousand Sons, I think. I'll do the Thousand Sons. They need some love. They're very lonely. And I'll see you all then. Ah, links to Wayland Games down below. If you wish to save some on your Eldar, if I've convinced you to collect this as an army, then click on that link and I'll save up to 20% and free delivery after £20. There is Forbidden Planet. We like Funko Pops, toys, comics, plushies, clothes, stuff like that. Everything that's geeky. They even do some Warhammer stuff as well. Uh, my merchandise, comics, t-shirts, uh, books, um, notebooks, bags, all my artwork, all of my writing, everything I've done is mine. Uh, there's that down below as well. C-Stick as well is something I'm helping promote on the 25th and 26th of this month. I uh, hope you can do, 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 uh, go there. £5 for the day, £8 for the weekend. It's in the Bath TCG shop. I hope you can make it. It's good. It'll be a good fun time for everyone. And finally, Patreon. Patreon is fun as well. Try that out. And I'll see you all again in the next one. But as always, with my Patreon, I'd rather you click on one of the other links because then, it, well, except these things, I don't get paid for that. That's me promoting someone. I think also I'm promoting something that I am actually passionate about myself. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hope you all have a good day, and I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.